San Diego Comic-Con 2023. The comics are so hot and so affordable. We have to stop what we're doing and talk about it. Let's get into it. It's the trending 10. We've been doing this for five years straight. Even if we have to go to a convention, even if it's not even that sunny out, rain or shine or clouds, we're still here. We're bringing you the top 10 trending comics, starting here with number 10, the Incredible Hulk 181 facsimile foil edition. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button. Let's talk about this foil facsimile. They changed the price, like, before release. It was going to be a bit more expensive. They lowered it. It caused a bunch of upticks in pre-orders and unless you got this prior to foc on your pull list a lot of people didn't get it yeah i was uh, surprised uh, when i saw this had a normal cover price of 3.99 on there usually this kind of stuff goes for five six maybe even seven eight dollars especially considering marvel especially considering how crazy the hype is for wolverine right now we've been seeing all kinds of wolverine books on the trending and the hot 10 because of Deadpool 3 and the Hugh Jackman costume reveal we just got like a week ago. I typically go ham on these types of books and I totally missed it. I was like focused on San Diego and prepping for this convention. I didn't get one copy. I wanna know if you got one. Let me know in the comment section below. Support the show and enhance your comic book collecting. Download Key Collector Comics. This is the best comic app in existence. In the last month, there has been an additional 400,000 comics added to the app. So not only can you catalog like your entire collection, you can get suggested pricing as well as a approximate value of your entire collection of funny books. Kind of a no-brainer. I don't know if Tom said it or not, but code Tom101 will get you a two-week trial for free. And what's this at number nine? A book that is horrendously down, and it's one of my favorite Wolverine keys. We're talking Wolverine number one. We're talking his first issue in his ongoing series. So yeah, this is a different Wolverine number one than the Frank Miller Wolverine number one that we've seen on the Hot 10 all over the last few months. This one we're seeing on the trending list, probably because we just got that costume reveal of Wolverine, like I just said, and people are getting excited. And you go look this book up, prices are down since the market is relatively down, and it makes a prime opportunity to scoop this book up. This may be one of the best times to secure a classic Wolverine key that's tough and high grade. An increase of 150% copies sold since we saw the more modern classic yellow suit that Hugh Jackman wears in that teaser photo. But get this, the heights this book reached back in June 2021 was $1,020. You can pick up a 9.8 right now for between $300. Someone picked one up for $370 this past week. This book on average goes for $100, proving not all really respected keys have to break the bank. It's also worth keeping in mind, there are 13 copies of this book graded at a 9.9, .9, and there is one 10.0 somewhere out there. It has only sold publicly once for $17,000, but that was back in 2016. So I'm really interested to see what that book would do if it ever comes to market again. I appreciate you mentioning that 9.9 .9 because the 9.9 heights will reach of over $5,000. You think with the market being as down as it is, you see that for maybe half the amount. Nope. Recent sale, July this year, puts it at $4,560. If that 9.9 .9 is that close, why is the 9.8 down 700? I think this is a book to grab now. I need some help with this next number, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, AKA Mr. Bolo. Next up on the list, you've got Deadpool, Merc with the Mouth, number seven, the first appearance of Lady Deadpool. $85 average sales, a recent high CGC 9.8 sold for $230. The heights this book reached was $700, it's down royally, and it's spiky because, yes, Deadpool, but because of Taylor Swift spec? He's getting too far ahead. What? There's, there's rumors that we're gonna see alternate versions of Deadpool in the upcoming Deadpool 3 movie. It's a multiverse movie, at least it looks like it's going to be, and as we all know, if you have a multiverse movie, you gotta have a whole bunch of alternate versions of your main character, so it does track that we're gonna see some alternate Deadpools in this movie, one of the more prominent ones happens to be Lady Deadpool, and yes, there are rumors that Tamer Swift might be making an appearance in this movie, as hard as that is to believe. Dude, she dressed up as Deadpool back in like 2016 or something for Halloween. That was the year the first Deadpool movie came out, and back in September when Ryan Reynolds shot that whole announcement video revealing that Hugh Jackman was coming back for Deadpool 3, that video was shot in the same house where they filmed Taylor Swift's music video. The song is called All Too Well. You can see side-by-shot comparisons here. 
when she did that tweet wearing the Deadpool gear, she actually accompanied it with a caption saying, thank you, Ryan Reynolds. You're the best hookup for the Deadpool stuff. Yeah, she tanked him. So I feel like there's definitely got to be some sort of connection there as well. And then also, Ryan Reynolds said this, in regards to Taylor Swift, are you kidding me? I would do anything for that woman. She's a genius. They clearly have some sort of relationship, so I, it might not be the craziest thing to see her pop up in this movie. At the list at number seven, one of the dopest glow-in-the-dark covers of all time is trending because of a 9.9 .9 record-breaking sale. We got Ghost Rider 15 from 1991. It's also the first glow-in-the-dark cover, and I actually got this book somehow. It was given to me like a mystery box or something. I forgot I own this. I'm, I, mean, I better sell it now. You got to get it graded, man. I'm not it. I'm not selling it. It's cool. $3 average sales. This is a book that you need to find in high grade because if you can get it graded and get a 9.9, .9, the record was set in 2012, all right? 200 bucks back then. Recent high sale of $820. That's an increase of 310% Congrats. for a dollar bin book. You not only need to know this book, but you need to have those like grading goggles on when you're hunting it. This one stands out too, so if you do come across it randomly, you, you'll probably be able to identify it. Especially if there are no lights on. This spiked up the book 150% in copies sold. All it took was that high sale to raise the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, the godfather of comic book YouTube channels, Addis Kidionis. What's up, peeps? Number six on the list. Star Wars, The Higher Republic Adventures. Number two. First appearance of Marky on Row. This is an increase of 243% in copies sold. I want to give a big shout out to our Star Wars specialist. If it's not Edis Quinones, it's Nate Made It, or it's Kessel Run Comics. Yeah, Kessel Run Comics is a homie. I go to him before, Eris or Nate, not to throw them They're under busy. the bus. They're busy. So is Kessel Run, too. He's got a really cool page. You guys got to give him a follow, especially if you're even remotely into Star Wars. He's actually got a really good eye for spotting little hints and clues that get dropped in the comic books and then might pop up later on. So yeah, go give him a follow. I asked him for some help with this, because I am very not into the High Republic. I have not dabbled at all. Oh, this is a kid's book, too. Yeah, I'm definitely way, way behind on my High Republic stuff. I gotta get in there. $20 average sales. The heights this book reached was $222 last year. Recent high sales, $50 for a CGC 9.8. High Republic takes place way in the past, and this is a character that you can essentially describe as the Grand Admiral Thrawn of the old days. Yeah, and the reason we're seeing this character specifically spike is because he is going to be appearing in the novel The Eye of Darkness. Star Wars High Republic, The Eye of Darkness, that comes out this November. He's featured on the cover. Ostensibly, the book will be about this character, too. And yeah, this is going to kick off Phase 3 of the High Republic, which is effectively like the third trilogy of the High Republic era. Supposedly, it's going to be the end of the High Republic as well, so that makes it super interesting to me, and I'm going to get in right at the very end. Zoe Lucky, boys, number one, the first appearance of the boys. Trade dress, color splash, and foil. I also have my first Spider-Man cover variant that I've ever done in my career. It happened here, 2023, San Diego Comic-Con, Davide Peratore. 20 bucks is what we're selling that on the website, and it's not stopping there. Night Terror's Batman number one, purple ha-ha foil, all available on comictom101.store. Bring in San Diego to the comic fam. Support the show, link in the description. And number five on the list, I am filming the trending 10 with Ryan, fire guy, while the Red Sonya trailer is literally dropping. Like right back there. You might even be able to see it if you like zoom in or hold your phone upside down or some weird stuff. They're dropping the trailer for Red Sonya behind us at Comic-Con, and her first appearance in Conan the Barbarian number 23 is on the list because people are getting really excited about this. We heard about this a while ago, an increase of 325% in copies sold after the announcement happened and then the casting happened. We're seeing average sales right now of $345. The heights this book reached, however, back in 2021 was $5,760. This is a tough book in high grade. Only 50 exist at a 9.8. People read their Conans back in the day. This is like one of the most common runs to hear from OG collectors that they will tell you. I bought a lot. I read my Conan. Recent 9.8 sold for $4,320 and that happened September of 2022. Convenient timing, too, because Dynamite just debuted a new Red Sonja series. Red Sonja number one, written by Jordan Grunbeck, with art by Walter Giovanni. Shout out Nikki B. Red Sonja number one is hitting shops this week. They have a Shannon Mayer, cover A, a Mike Mignola variant, and a Jenny Frizen variant, and a plethora of others. But those three, 
I'm just gonna be disappointed if they're not on your pull list. Add redstone here to your pull list. And Ryan, hit him with number four. We gotta do a signing soon. We do, we gotta get going. Number four on the list is Prelude to Deadpool Core, issue number three from 2010. Okay guys, let's just spec on all multiverse characters. I mean, it makes sense. We heard that this movie, again, we talked about it earlier. We heard this movie is going to feature a bunch of different Deadpool variants. And once you look into it, like I did, I didn't realize that there's basically a comic book precedent for crossing over Deadpool with nearly every single character in the Marvel Comics universe. We're going to go on. through some of the weird ones for you, too. There's there's some weirdos in here. Everybody knows about Galactapoo. Galactapoo? I said, I got do you poo on the brain, apparently. apparently. Galactapool. Yeah. And then, of course, you have... Dogpool, which is making his first appearance in this comic on the list, which is hitting $10 average sales and an increase of copies sold of an aggressive 400%. But we have other characters to talk about too. We do have other ones, but Dogpool is the one that people are actually hearing rumors about. That one might actually show up in the movie, but there's other characters that you've got to keep your eye out for because who knows how weird this movie is going to get. We've got characters like Headpool, which is the severed head of Deadpool from uh, the Marvel Zombies universe because it survived the whole Marvel Zombies. You've also got Beard of Bees Pool, which is Deadpool with a beard made out of living bumblebees. Mm -hmm. Sounds weird, but I would like to see that on camera. That'd be funny. No one was specking on this book. There are seven copies in total on the census, and only three graded at a 9.8. We're here at number three on the list, Metamorpho number one, from all the way back in 1965. We've got $150 average sales for this book. How does that feel, Ryan? Nathan Fillion gets cast as Guy Gardner blows the internet up, and the next day, Metamorpho gets cast and becomes one of the hottest books in the world. I'm talking about Brave and the Bold 57, propelling itself from the trending to the hot 10 in under a week, and now we have the first solo series on the trending 10 for the first time ever, for an increase of copies sold to 400%. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for this. I didn't really know a whole lot about Metamorpho until now, but the fact that they cast Anthony Kerrigan from Barry, which is one of my favorite shows, and he's my favorite character on that show, he's really funny. I'm very excited to see what he does with this character in live action. Metamorpho is such a uh, burdened character, constantly trying to repair himself. He's like not really human, you know? His body parts are elements, right? And his narratives largely focus on him trying to rebuild himself and become whole again. But He's super powerful, and I think James Gunn is going to provide an interesting superhero twist to the screen. Just like they're going to do with number two on the list, the Spectre 54 from 1997. We have the first appearance of the second Mr. Terrific Hot Damn. Yeah, this is actually the first time that we've seen any spiking of this character's first appearance since it was announced that he will also be appearing in Superman Legacy, played by Eddie Kethegi. Real talk, though? How pumped are you about Mr. Terrific? I think this is some good news i love how deep james gunn is going into the, the more obscure less popular dc characters that we haven't even seen in live action before this guy's gonna be really cool he's a super genius he's like in the olympics he's got these t-spheres which i'm very excited to see in live action it's gonna be like um like phantasm on the screen he's got like 14 phds the spheres are essentially a comic book get out of jail free card they do anything you need he's a self-made multi-millionaire he's like a cross between tony stark and a little bit of barry allen as far as the smarts go you know what i'm talking about i was gonna say reed richards myself but yeah throw him in the next two someone not? from marvel why not exactly it's gonna be cool i'm excited to see him and we did see uh, the terrifics spike last week when this uh when this casting announcement was first revealed because that book has mr terrific and metamorpho who we just talked about on the same team together but this is the first time we're seeing mr terrific's first appearance the second mr terrific's first appearance on the list. $50 average sales for this book. The heights it reached was $635 back in April. Recent high sale for a CGC 9.8 is $1,000. That's an increase of 57% in a few months because of Jane's gun announcements at a time that is being described as an adjustment period for comic books. If you're looking to spec, now is the time. Books are lower than they've been in years. And I think DC is prime opportunity for investment long term. All of that to say, we're seeing an increase of 433% in copies sold of this book, which is why I placed so high on the list. I need your support, comic fam. Hit the like, sub, and subscribe. Join us on WhatNot. We are literally at Hero House right now. We're seeing crash down posters, crash down on the screen. They're promoting our book. Support WhatNot. Link in the description. You get a $10 credit after your first purchase of $10 or more. We're giving books away. I've given away three 9.9s already, and it's day one at the list of number one, the hottest trending comic book 
in the world is Gargoyles number one. Yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere, but I'm excited. It just got announced this week that Kenneth Branagh is attached to direct this movie. So that's exciting. That's good news, especially when you consider his career. But get this, $115 average sales on a book that hit heights of 810 for a CGC 9.8 back in 2021. Recent 9.8 sales put it at $250. This book is trending aggressively for a couple reasons. The movie, Dynamite has the return of Gargoyles continuing from the animation, by the way. Add that to your pull list. By the way, all these Dynamite plugs yeah. are not sponsored. I'm just diehard Dynamite. It's just a lot of Dynamite action this week, too. That's For real. Dynamite. An increase of copies sold to 514%. This book is so down and trending so hard because it's affordable for the first time in three years. And yeah, like I was saying before, when you consider the director, Kenneth Branagh, he's actually got some pretty relevant experience in his career. He has directed live action adaptations of Disney properties before. Did he do the, the first Thor movie, the uh, not worst Thor movie? Yeah, if you want to call it that, I guess that's fair. Yeah, he did the first Thor movie as well. He directed Cinderella, which is what I was getting at before. He is actually the first person in history to be nominated for seven different categories of Academy Awards throughout his career, which is pretty cool. He's very talented. However... He is a member of the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild, both of those. And since both of those guilds are on strike, there haven't been reports that Kenneth Branagh has joined the picket lines. So while he is attached to this movie, uh, like a whole bunch of other movies on this list, there's probably not going to be any action on it moving forward. So it actually might not be a bad time to scoop the book up before things start moving again on this film. Deadpool 3, we thought we were going to see early next year. And production has officially shut down. No movie is safe right now. I got to know your thoughts. Which of these books do you think are primed to purchase now? The prices are too low on a lot of them, so I want to know your picks in the comment section below. And have a great San Diego Comic-Con, as always. Geek responsibly. Enough said.